Let's bow our heads. Yes, sir. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our strength. Thank you for the city of Montgomery, God. Lord, we thank you for all of our public officials. God, we ask you to put your arms around them and help them to make godly decisions. God, all lives matter because you created all of us. American is already great because you created it. It's just the peoples in the world that are trying to do things that is not godly. Lord, we lift your name. We praise you, Mary's baby boy. God, we ask you to help all of the officials today to make decisions that they are able to go home and sleep on. Help them to make the right decision. Help them to do the things that are right and the things that are pleasing in your sight. God, forgive us for all of our sins, the sins that we know of and the ones that we don't know. And God, at the end of the day, we all are brothers and sisters. We didn't create ourselves, God, you did it. God, we lift your name, we praise you, and we thank you. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Council made a motion on the work session minutes from September the 20th. Move to adopt. I have a motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. In a motion on the regular council meeting minutes for the 20th of September. Move to adopt. I have a motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Mr. Bayer. Well, thank you. Um, if you haven't um, recognized it through some of your expense accounts, we're into the uh, new fiscal year by four days. I was uh, very pleased to get the uh, 2016 closed. I have some numbers uh, we'll share with you uh, from the last uh, report for September. But before that, uh, I want to show two videos. Uh, John Petrie, who's our chief of staff, and uh, Chief uh, Mifford Jordan called me early part of last week uh, about these two young uh, students at Park Crossing, um, Chester Pruitt and Sanaya Barnes, uh, who did yeoman service, heroic service, in stopping that school bus. And our fire department wanted to do something very special. And so, John, if you would come and um, share uh, verbally, and then we've got a video that uh, maybe John will uh, share with you to show what, in fact, uh, we did last, uh, late last week to honor these uh, young men. Thank you, sir. Uh, on the morning of September the 7th, it was a typical school morning for these students going to Park Crossing School. Uh, Chester Pruitt, and uh, he's in Mr. Pruitt's district out there. I don't know if there's any relation, but <laughs> Chester and uh, uh, his fellow student, Shania Barnes, were on the bus headed to school, headed down Taylor Road towards Park Crossing. When Mr. Pruitt realizes the bus is feeling kind of shaky, rocking, and he looks up and the bus driver has slumped over in the seat and they're in the oncoming traffic. So I'm sure there's a hero in all of us, but uh, Mr. Pruitt, he had to overcome that fear when he looked up and he did and he reaches up and he grabs the steering wheel of the bus and he directs it out of oncoming traffic while uh, yelling for someone to come activate the emergency brakes on the bus. At which time, Miss Barnes was in the back of the bus. She gets up with no fear herself, runs to the front and activates the parking brake. The bus careens off into the ditch and no students were injured. Uh, I, can't, I can't speak to the condition of the driver due to HIPAA laws, but uh, it was, it's really a good thing and it's, you know, I guess you have to be in a place, the right place at the right time for these things to happen. But in order to act, you really have to have some courage. And if Michael show the video, we uh, wanted to do something special for these two students. 
So we surprised them. We worked with their school uh, administrators and their parents. And on the morning of September the 30th, we showed up at the bus stop unannounced and offered a ride to Mr. Pruitt and Ms. Barnes, and along with Mr. Pruitt's younger brothers, you'll see in the uh, movie also. So. It's a little bit dim, but you can see we're bus stop. We picked the kids up. Um, they were absolutely surprised. Uh, Ms. Barnes knew nothing of it. She even had her school project with her that morning. And we had a few gifts for them also. So. What was their reaction? Oh, they, they were ecstatic. And the other kids there at the bus stop also were, uh, were like, <laughs> they when, to get when, on, didn't when do I get my turn? <laughs> you know, we, we don't all get to ride on fire trucks. <laughs> so uh, you got to have special permission from the fire chief in order to do these kind of things. So and this, is, of course, is them riding, uh, arriving at the front door of the school. Uh, we got them there safe, sound, and on time for first period. <laughs> That's just one of the great things that the um, Montgomery Fire Department uh, does. And they have a big event coming at the end of this month, 28th, 29th? 24th through the 29th. 24th through the 29th. If you're not doing anything on that Thursday or Friday or Saturday, you might want to be down in front of the hotels there. It's going to be a, uh, a defending of the challenge, the World Cup, that, uh, of the world record that we hold. The other one uh, would is a video uh, that uh, some of the uh, media, I guess maybe it was a consultant for the chamber, uh, Dawn, is that correct? Wasn't it uh, Stamp? Stamp did this. Uh, and we wanted to show uh, this to those that uh, were not able to be with us in Mobile to just to sh show you the sense of pride that we all felt as well as the 11 or 1200 Montgomerians that came down to participate in the USS Montgomery commissioning. And uh, it might be a, a bit dull listening to a speech or two for the first minute or so, but then when, when uh, Miss Sessions uh, calls out, uh, gentlemen and ladies, man your ship, that's when you get uh, chill bumps. So, Mike, if you would roll that. In 2011, Ray Mavis, the Secretary of the Navy, called Todd Strange and said, we're going to name the next LCS littoral combat ship, independent class, number eight, after the city of Montgomery, Alabama. We've got a big delegation from not only Montgomery, for Navy and uh, Air Force uh, friends are here tonight. It's going to be an opportunity to really uh, thank the Navy for what they've done. Thank Austell for the great ship that they've built. We're going to do a lot of, of uh, exchanging of gifts, and we've got a surprise or two, uh, exchange of Bell from 1892, and several other um, big wow factors, and we're looking forward to it, and we're just excited to have a wonderful time to celebrate uh, the Navy and the great tradition that the Navy has uh, with their ships, and we'll commission it tomorrow. It is one of those ships designed to maneuver quickly and stealthily, and it's designed to do multiple things. So it really embraces the attributes of our information age, of agility, speed, lethality, uh, mobility, flexibility. Uh, it, it combines all of these things, and it's efficient, it's effective, it's relevant for the cyber age and the information age world. The city of Montgomery has been sponsoring the ship in getting the ship ready for commissioning, and so their uh, goal has been to infuse sort of the soul of Montgomery into the, uh, into the ship. What a lot of people don't know is that we've got six street signs on the ship, and there are streets also in the city of Montgomery uh, named after Navy admirals that served in the War of 1812. And those six admirals, and you may recognize them from the streets of Montgomery, are Decatur, Hull, Perry, Bainbridge, and McDonough, and there's Lawrence as well. So six Navy admirals, and all of them grace our passageways on the ship. And so if you walk the decks of the ship, you'll see the signs, Bainbridge, and then you may have Perry on the other side. If you go to the bridge, you'll see Hull. If you go down on my main decks, you'll see uh, McDonough. And uh, it's definitely added a personalization and another connection to Montgomery. It's a special day for Austell, the Navy, our Defense Department, for the United States of America, for Mobile, Alabama, and the whole state. 
and a very special day indeed for our capital city, Todd, uh, Montgomery, Alabama. And I have to say a very special day for the ship sponsor, my wife, Mary Sessions. Last night when we had the ringing of the bell by the commander of this great warship, the announcement was Montgomery is in port. Not the city of, not the county of, but Montgomery is in port. And on behalf of the 230,000 citizens that we represent in the city and county of Montgomery, we want to thank you to the new U.S. Navy, to the Honorable Jeff Sessions, and Madam Sessions, will you please come up here, please? I want to give you a great, great, great Montgomery hood. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Sessions christened this ship in Mobile, Alabama on November 8, 2014. Mary, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Officers and crew of the USS Montgomery, man our ship and bring her to life. about you but I still get goosebumps when that uh, man your ships that uh, really did it uh, our, our crew did a great great job and um, everybody uh, is proud of that uh, we've had a technical issue or two but uh, those are getting fixed uh, uh, we had a captain uh, we had a uh, email from the captain uh, that talked about uh, losing power in one one of the it's not an engine, but one of the jet uh, propulsion. He said he didn't much worry about it because he had twice the power he had on his previous ship when it was at full steam. So uh, <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll all sort itself out. Uh, I have a couple of other things that I would like to uh, share with the assembled group. Uh, you want to throw the uh, litter program up, uh, Mike? Yeah, uh, a, a bit difficult uh, to see, but uh, this is our, we've completed five weeks now, and uh, if we can get all the way to the bottom, what you'll see is 4.728 tons. That's almost 10,000 pounds of debris and litter that we have collected, and you'll see a number over there, it's uh, 2,500 bucks. You do the arithmetic, it's about 28 cents a pound that we're picking up. And we've been averaging three or four uh, during the, the week of the Red Eagle uh, Honor Farm, plus one of our uh, supervisors uh, from the Clean City Commission. Uh, up until this week, we've been doing only city routes, Atlanta Highway, um, some other uh, routes, uh, that, that are in the city, but at effective this Monday, we now have the uh, right-of-way authorization to get routes that are state-owned, which will mean that we will be doing Taylor Road. As a matter of fact, we started yesterday. Taylor Road all the way to US uh, 231, US 231, back to the interstate. Here's, here, these are the routes that we will be doing uh, with uh, some frequency generally uh, about once a week. There's another map too that'll show um, yeah, that, that's route one, keep going. Route two, that's about route three, route four, and then route five is a small route. And we'll, what we'll do on that route is we'll pick up some of the city routes. Uh, and frankly, we'll go anywhere uh, supervision determines that there's litter. We will not go on the interstate. But that's a program that uh, has uh, been successful. I had, was on radio this morning, I had 
two or three calls saying that they can already see the difference uh, in the fact if we picked up more than four tons in five weeks, uh, we're making an impact. But we got to do it with repetity and uh, repetition. So we're, um, we're continuing to, to do that uh, in a very cost-effective way. Mike, uh, you got the next slide there. What, uh, what you have here is the end of year final summary. This first one is the sales uh, and use tax, and I'll, I'll reference you through September down to the 100 million, 164,000 for 2015 to 102,535. That's about $2.4 million increase, which is uh, just over 2.4% because we were right at 100,000. Uh, the 237 is only the month, not the, the year to date. Go to the next one. Uh, lodging taxes, you'll see that those were up uh, nicely from 8.8 .8 to 9.369. So that would be uh, like uh, 1.500,000, uh, 500, about 500,000. Don and them done a good job there. The next is our gasoline tax. Gasoline tax is up uh, marginally. Uh, about uh, maybe a little bit less than 200,000. And then the last is your ABC taxes. Uh, they're gonna be up a couple of 100,000. So when you take all of those revenue streams on the taxes, uh, those four taxes, uh, last year we had 117,289,000, 117,289. This year, if you add those four together, it'll be 120,559, which is a uh, 3.25 million up, which is a 2.8% uh, up. So it was a decent year. Uh, that does not include the increases that we had in the uh, uh, business license, nor uh, uh, some increases in our ad valorem tax. And so all in all, we don't know where it'll shake out. There was a nice article in the paper this morning uh, quoting Barry uh, Crabb, uh, who's done a fantastic job along with his staff in getting us to where we are. But I wanted to share that with you uh, and uh, show you that uh, last year was uh, a, a good year. Uh, we do have concerns, however, for the internet sales. More and more and more internet uh, sales are occurring, but uh, through the state of Alabama, one uh, big um, contract has been signed, Barry, with Amazon. And I think we are getting, we the state is, are getting 8% and then we will get our fair share of half of that, which uh, is not an insignificant amount of money. Uh, it's more than what we're getting. And, and hopefully we'll be able to, on a state basis, be able to negotiate these contracts with some of these other major internet sellers. But at the end of the day, we really do need to be able to tax uh, from a standpoint, if they buy in Montgomery, that we ought to receive that directly. I don't know that we'll ever get there. So that's my message tonight. And, Thank uh, you. Hopefully you can uh, move through the agenda quickly. Anybody have a question for the mayor? <coughs> okay. Moving into our agenda for the night. Any special committee reports tonight? We have nobody on public communication on the agenda items, so we'll go right into the agenda. Madam Clerk. Mr. President, yes. I'm sorry I was down here discussing with Mr. Lee what okay. he missed earlier. Uh, we had an ad hoc committee meeting uh, last week with the uh, Montgomery Board of Education, and they are going back to the drawing board and looking at some plans as far as elementary schools, what they think they can do as far as a magnet, and they are supposed to bring those back to us within the next week or two. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Very good. Mr. President, item one, application for a lounge retail class two package license, doing business as Chisholm Package Store, 2819 Laurel Tumka Road. Representative Chisholm Package Store, please. I'm Brad Griffin. the record, okay. I'm Brad Griffin on behalf of Omsai okay. LLC, doing business as Chisholm, Chisholm Package Store. Okay. Okay, we've had our public hearing on this issue. Mr. <laughs> You have some issues here? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, as stated in our last uh, meeting, I had some real concerns about this license application uh, because of the uh, lack of communication first with uh, the council uh, representative and I presumed a lack of communication with the neighborhood association. 
So I ask that this item be carried over uh, two weeks until today so that I could confer with the Neighborhood Association and with the North Montgomery Alliance, which is a larger group of neighborhood associations representing that area. And they are here today, some representatives from both the West Chisholm Neighborhood Association and the North Montgomery Alliance are also here today, and they would like to express their views with regard to this application. Okay, who do you want to talk to? Go on. Okay. Ms. Martin. Which one? Yes, ma'am. You are? Rebecca Martin, president of Chisholm. Speaking to the microphone. To the mic I'm Martin. sorry. <laughs> okay. Rebecca Martin, president of Chisholm's Improvement Association. Okay. And uh, I'm here with the president of our North Montgomery Alliance, Mr. Greg Roberts. Oh, there he is. He's, he's going to be passing out some pamphlets and information to inform you guys of why it is and the reasons for our opposition to this uh, package door being opened in this area. We'd ask that you please pay close attention to the literature that you've been uh, given. And uh, one other thing that I would like to mention on the onset is that this is not a new issue. We were here almost a uh, year to the date in uh, 2015. It actually, uh, the council met on September 22nd in 2015 where the council did unanimously vote to deny this uh, license. And uh, even though we were not aware of it, on the 20th of September 2016, the same parties were back here for that very same license, not just for beer and wine, but this time to open up a package store in the same area. The situations in our community has not changed. As a matter of fact, they have worsened. We've had so many murders that it's unfathomable to even consider some three in a three to four month period within blocks of this particular shopping center park plaza so we it is of our opinion that this would not enhance the community all it's going to do is contribute to a lot of litter a lot of hanging around in that shopping center we've worked so hard you if you look at uh, one of the uh, pages in the literature that you received, you'll see that there's been a great deal of work way back in 2004. That's a newspaper article from the Montgomery Advertiser on uh, where I petitioned and worked really diligently with the property owners as well as the managers to have that shopping center dug up, resurfaced, repaid, lights put in there, the buildings painted, a security guard there, which how many times do you need a security guard by a pharmacy? That's another of the issues. CBS Pharmacy is right there. The package store would be within 10 to 12 feet when the customers go back and forth into that pharmacy for their medications. So we are in total opposition. I'd like to have uh, all four. Okay, anyone, any, anyone else want to speak? Yes, our president of the Alliance, please. Hello, I'm Greg Roberts. On behalf of the North Montgomery Neighborhood Alliance, we are opposed to the granting of the liquor license to the Chisholm Package Store. We will welcome a business that actually contributes to the uplifting of the area, but not another liquor store that does not meet our expectations. The neighborhoods that are closest to the proposed location all unanimously are opposed to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, okay. All right, Mr. Larkin. Yes. Thank you for your conversation. Mr. President, um, uh, as I said before, uh, it is good to see the attorney representing the applicant, but I would like to see the applicant for this license and she's here. to present herself to the council. And my name is Mita Mistry. Miss, Miss, Miss Mystery? Mystery, yes. Miss Mystery, are you a resident of the state of Alabama or of the state of Georgia? State of Georgia. Uh, uh, what, what then is your, your interest in operating a package store in Montgomery, Alabama, if you live in the state of Georgia? Actually, I have, I've been in Alabama, but uh, 
I bought a house in Georgia with a nice price. So, and my daughter wants to go to college in uh, Georgia. So I had to move for her, but my business is still here. I have a, a Alasal business, and now I'm opening this liquor business because of the community people who come to our store, they buy beer, but they were asking for, they were strongly asking for having a liquor. They were forcing us to having a liquor store. Why don't we open a liquor store? What, so what, actually, is, what, is the, what is the business that you operate currently, presently? What is the, what is the name of the It's a convenience store. Convenience store? Yes. Where is it located? Just next to this address, which is a 2817 Lower Vitunka Road. It's next door. Next yes. door. So is there any relation or relationship with the gentleman who applied for this license in this same location approximately it, one it year ago? It will be easy for... Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Mr. Larkin, th this... There was not an application for a liquor license or a package license last year. There was an application to sell beer and wine. It was later overturned. Y'all voted unanimously. They, she didn't even stand up to say anything last year. Well, she didn't. But, and so what happened is, is that we appealed it. And then ABC board said, you know what, guys? Everybody in Montgomery has this. Why doesn't this neighborhood have it? Well. Y'all stand up that are here that do want it. Can I get a, can I get a response yeah. to the question that I originally asked? And that yeah. is, is there a relationship well, there's, there, but with, a, with the applicant? Question, the question doesn't make any sense is because there, is there it's a not the same sir, thing. Is there a relationship between, with this individual and the individual who applied for the beer and wine license last year? Miss Mystery applied for that beer and wine license last year. So this is the same individual who applied for the, for the, yes. for the license last yes. year? Yes. Is that a matter of record, um, uh, Madam Clerk, that it, it was this individual who applied for that license last year? I don't have that. We'd have to do the research. Omsai LLC is the, is the business that applies. Is there any relationship with a gentleman who also is, her, hus is her a husband principal? is a co-owner of the business, right. yes, sir. Okay. So it's the same license application except in a different name this time. It's not in a different name. Omsai LLC is the exact same business doing business as Chisholm Package Store because it's a different mm -hmm. storefront. Except it was the gentleman who presented. Who, who presented well, her, hus her husband, okay. yes, sir. Right. They're both, as you know, LLCs have more than one member many times. And that's what happened there. I believe also at our last meeting there was some representation from uh, this group and from you, sir, mm -hmm. that there, there, was a, there is a major community outreach program that emanates from this, this group of people with doing things for the community. Yes, sir. Can, could, could you cite me some of those? Yeah. Um, like I did last time, they sponsored all 500 kids from Chisholm Elementary during their, they have something called a spring bling. They gave chips and, and drinks to every single child there, 500 of them. I mean, Mr. Larkin, we, we've had people come in here. They're standing up. I understand that there's always going to be people that are for it and against it. In the mayor's message, one of the things that we look at is alcoholic beverage sales tax revenue. There's not a beverage store anywhere in this neighborhood. Nowhere. As a matter of fact, from there what I understand... There are many neighborhoods that don't have beverage stores, sir. Sir? There are many neighborhoods that don't have beverage stores. Well, all these districts do, because that's where it's all coming from. Not in my district, not in my neighborhood, right. there's no liquor store. That's right, because ABC store closed. And the other package store that's up the road closed. Well, and so we're asking this council, just like there's any other store in this town. I mean, they're everywhere. I'm not really sure. We're not asking for a nightclub, and and I understand. And, and, and as a matter of fact, what I don't understand is this: all these people came and and asked for it to be done. You took it upon yourself. These ladies and gentlemen here. This was a public hearing last time, two weeks ago. And that's the time that we were supposed to stand up and do all this, and, and that, they, had, they had that opportunity. You know, I, I don't understand what, what why. Is it, what, is, what is it that I took upon myself, sir? To go find them, to go talk to them. It is my responsibility <clears throat> to go find them. Before the first meeting, yes, sir. 
It is my responsibility to do yeah. it at any, any at any point in the meeting process, sir. Yeah. I am the council representative representing this area. I agree with you. It is my legal and statutory responsibility to listen to the citizens of the community. Well, listen to them because they're all sitting right there. How many of them live in the community? How many of them has ever been to a neighborhood association meeting? I beg your pardon? You never heard of the neighborhood association? Mr. President, uh, yes, sir. I, I believe they are out of order. Well, you okay. asked them no. the question. I believe they're out of order. We asked the question. Okay. All right. We don't need to prolong this. Okay. Can, can, can I ask a All question? Right. I, we've had, I'm going to give due deference to the, to the council person. He knows more about the district than I do. But I would like to ask, I, I would like to ask a question. Um, the young lady with the yellow, am I looking right, the yellow dress on? You said you didn't know about it, um, about the public hearing. Um, are we posting? Are we posting things? I mean, I, I would like to know why they didn't know about it. Is it something the city isn't doing? Well, there was a posting, but it was in an obscure place, and if you're and it's a vacant building, it was in a window where there's no operative business because it's vacant. So if you're not going there and searching it out, we missed it. And I think anybody could do that. Um, most of the time when those uh, postings are placed, they're, they're placed in an obscure place. And they're very discreet. Uh, very discreet. May, may and we did miss it, but we are here today because we were informed and I actually went to see the sign. I am the president and representative of the Neighborhood Association. There have been many signs, by the way, you, now, you didn't ask me this, but please allow me. There have been many signs, because I hear people alluding to the fact they have no idea about this association, but it was founded and established, certified, I have the certificate in 1998. Well, uh, the I, signs I are placed all around this very shopping center, yeah. giving notification of the meeting. Uh, yes, ma'am. So I, if anybody I, didn't I, see it, that is not our fault. I, I, I'm not Thank questioning you. that. Okay. What, what I'm going to do is if, if something is not, if someone is missing something, I just want to know what's oh, the procedure. Well, it was in an well, well I'm place. talking, I guess, maybe to the, to the city who's doing who would be posting the sign. I, I'm not talking about whether. Oh, okay. okay but <laughs> yeah, because but it, it would affect my district, too. Behind some bars is yeah. why nobody would have seen it. Can somebody answer that? I mean, wh whether, whether we post the sign is a conspicuous place. Well, let me, let me use a. We post it the same Council way forever. Councilor Bell, they are the applicant, but we give the sign to the applicant, and they post it, and then the police department goes out and confirms to me that it's up. Nothing different. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I think the discussion has been enough, Mr. Larkin. <clears throat> Call for question. Mr. President, uh, I move to deny this application. Okay, I have a motion to deny. All in favor, raise your hand. Six. All opposed, same sign. Two. Okay. Mr. Smith, All I, I, mean, I did not get District 2's vote. One abstention. You abstained? Thank you. Okay. The motion, motion. motion to deny carries by motion six. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number two. Item two, ordinance authorizing purchase sale agreement and sale of real estate owned by the city of Montgomery to the Waterworks and Sanitary Sewer Board, Weirs Ferry Road, Pump Station site. Mr. Bollinger. Uh, I'd like to uh, suspend the rules, please. Okay. I think we could do that on the entire rest of the agenda. On the, the agenda. on the rest. On the rest of the agenda. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Move to uh, adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Ordinance is adopted. <clears throat> Item three: Ordinance authorizing reimbursement pursuant to United States Treasury Regulation Section 1.150-2. Need a motion. Move to adopt. A motion to adopt. On favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Mr. Bell, did you vote on, on yep. that one? <laughs> Unanimous. Yep. I'm sorry. 
Okay. Item four, resolution denying and a revoking right to operate a business for failure to purchase business licenses and pay sales tax. A ROM doing business as perfume collections and in style at 1000 East Del Mall kiosk. Mr. McGinnis. Mr. President, we still have not heard from them and they have no license. Okay. Motion to uphold. A motion to uphold on favor raise your hand. Unanimous resolution is adopted. Item five, appeal by John B. Lofton regarding unsafe structures at 146 and 152 West South Boulevard. Mr. Lofton, you still want to talk? Y'all got <clears throat> No, just get it closer to your mouth. Closer to your mouth. I'm appealing the room uh, that I had on my two houses on the South Boulevard, 146 and 152. Uh, I stated it was uh, in bad condition and so forth and wanted to destroy it, demolish it, and uh, um, uh, they cleared a lot of This uh, comes up here as bad time for me because I'm way up in age and was intended to use this property for the purpose of old age and uh, increased costs of doctors and nurses and so forth uh, as a result of that. And uh, I just didn't want to get rid of the house to begin with. And uh, of course, if the council sees fit to it's got to go, it's got to go, I guess. But in the meantime, consider the fact that I'm still using those buildings for storage of furniture. And uh, I've been doing it ever since I had it back in 1980. And uh, I would appreciate it very much if the council would see fit to uh, uh, overrule this ruling and, and let me have the hours of that. Uh, yeah, uh, this is my district. As we spoke earlier, <clears throat> uh, what I'm willing to do is, of course, um, I've looked at the properties and uh, they are in bad condition and they are unsafe. But in order to help you out and to alleviate some of the burden, I'm willing to pay for the uh, demolition of those so that you will not be uh, uh, levied, uh, um, uh, the, you know, the cost of the uh, demolition of that. And I'm uh, willing to give you 90 days to, you know, deal with the uh, storage um, property, the property that you have stored in those two properties. Um, I've already given you, a, I see your son, yeah. I've already given you my number so that you can call me up and we can coordinate. And then when it's ready, then I'll go ahead on and um, talk to um, the uh, people to make sure that they um, build me uh, to, uh, to demo, demo those properties. And I think that'll help you out in terms of um, whenever you do decide to sell the properties, it won't be a, a lien on the properties. Okay, that's acceptable. Okay. Okay. All right. It will be a lien on the property. It will be a lien on the property. You're going to listen. It will be a lien on the property if you use your city funds. It's still going to be a lien. Oh, really? Yes, sir. It will be a demolition cost. It's not a free give me. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Is that true? Well, at least that's cheaper than them having put up. Yeah, cheaper than you all having to pay for it. Well, from what I've just been informed, that there will be a lien on the property. So when you do sell it, could um, someone but, could someone address that? I'm sorry. Could someone address that? I mean, yeah. is it true that there would be liens on the properties uh, if if the demolition was paid for? What yeah, out out of our capital improvement funds or city funds? Yes, sir. There'll be. A, I mean, y'all speak up if I'm wrong. Why would that be the case? Maybe already existed. Mike, yeah, yeah. It's still city money that we're using to tear down a private structure. There's going to be a lien on it at the end of the day. But it's money. You can't give money to a private individual. No, that's right. I mean, I've done it. We have used we have used these funds for demolition projects in the past, Mr. President. But I think the, but I think the lien. But there's a lien put on. I've done, you done it. 50 times, but there's a lien put on it at the end of the day. Tom, Thomas uh, is just informing us that it, under state law that if city funds are used, there would be a lien push, put on that. Okay. okay. 
Got to be. Okay. Got to be. Now, guess what? Uh, uh, right now, I guess the city is requesting that they pay for it themselves. No. Well, they had. Well, actually, they if, it, it. It, it would be the lien would be put on there because they wouldn't pay. Mm -hmm. If they paid for it, then there would not be a lien. Well, get, some, get some clarification. Well, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Am I, I'm saying he can still pay for it, can he not? He can still pay for it. Well, right now, the owner, the owner, yes. The owner, yes. No, no, I'm talking about Mr. Green. Mr. Green? If he paid, if he paid personally, he could, yes. Which is Well, if we tore it down, what's the difference? The city still would have put a have a lien on it. He, yeah. If it ever sells, they collect either those way, liens when it sells, yeah. unlike the grass liens that we collect at the end of the tax season. The only difference is that money is coming out of yours instead of coming out of the city as a whole. So there's no difference. That's it. Difference. That's that's difference. Okay. All right. All right. Any more questions? No. My final comment is that if that's the state law, the state law needs to be changed. There's something wrong with that. Okay. I don't, All right. I need a motion to oppose. Do we know? Yeah, give, give, nine days yeah, give you 90 days to um, actually take care of, of the storage or whatever. And then once again, go ahead and give me a call. Unfortunately, there'll still be a lien on the property. Um, and once again, as I inform you, you still have to keep up the maintenance of the property even after the property is gone. So I move that uh, you get 90 days to uh, take care of um, everything else. And then from that point forward, I'll uh, go ahead and pay for the demolition out of my capital improvement. I have a motion. Uh, uh, to wait, a point of clarification, may I ask? Okay. What are we voting on? Are we voting on uh, the uphold the recommendation, or are we voting to give him? Uh, we're we voting to give him 90 days to. But, but we're still going to uphold the uh, demolition. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the council needs to either confirm it's an unsafe structure or overturn the fact that it's not an unsafe structure. Yes, yeah. sir. Right. Uh, that's I the think decision it's the council needs to make tonight. Yeah. Well, no, no. If, if we're, we're not moving, we're not moving. We're not even making a move to demolish the structure at this time. Mm -hmm. He's with. He's within his right of appeals to say that it's not an unsafe structure. That's the only question before the board tonight, the council tonight. Either it's unsafe or it's not. That's right. So we're, that's we're, what you're voting on. At this point, yeah. we are not making a move to tear the house down. It, we just want to continue the due process. Yeah. The due process, how, how long would that last? Wow. Uh, the due process, he, he's within his right of appeal to say whether it is or is not an unsafe structure. He's got 45 days to act himself, and after that 45 days, then we have the right to bring it to the council for a decision of demolition. So it, it's not in demolition mode at this point. Then. Yes, and let me say one more thing. After the house is demolished, we bring it back to the council again for you to approve the amount of the assessment. So this is three or four month process. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. All right. All right. The motion. Now instead of motion 45 is to days, I'd like to give them at least. You, you would have a resolution in front of you at the time to assess the amount of the cost. Mm -hmm. And you would approve or disapprove that at that time. That's the second motion, not, not tonight, at a future time. So all you're doing tonight is saying, okay, it is unsafe structure, go forward. Yeah. And once again, you have my number, give me a call and uh, anything I can do to assist. Yeah. We, we have a motion to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Okay. Next item. Item six, pursuant to section 1153B1, Code of Alabama, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 328 Collinwood Avenue. You have a motion to uphold. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Item seven, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 581 Greyhound Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Item eight, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 528 Lincoln Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Item nine, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 2025 Laverne Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Item 10, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 2036 Laverne Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. 11, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 2040 Luverne Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Item 12, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 2020 Luverne Street. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. 
Item 13, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 2126 Luverne Street. Move to uphold. All parties raise your hand. Unanimous. Item 14, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 633 Stephen Street. Move to uphold. All parties raise your hand. Unanimous. Item 15, authorization of demolition of an unsafe structure at 3500 Whitting Avenue. Move to uphold. All parties raise your hand. Unanimous. Item 16, resolution declaring, authorizing, and assessing cost of abatement of public nuisances on various lots. Move to uphold. All parties raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Okay. Next item. Yes, sir. I have before you your allocations for contingency funds, which the mayor has approved for District 4, 7,000 to Carver High School, 3,000 to Connecting Life Body of Christ, 800 to Echo, 500 to Women of Hope, 1,200 to Bellingraph Middle School Cheerleaders, 1,009 to Montgomery Performing Arts Center, 1,000 to ACTS ADC for District 9, 450 to Impact. District 9, 500 to Montgomery Symphony Orchestra, 1,000 to He-Man Ministries, 500 to Air Force Association, and 8,500 to Tuckabachi Council, and 500 to Fitzgerald Museum. And Mr. Mayor, Mr. Larkin gave me four just before the meeting started. There are 500 to Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, 500 to Vision of Grace Transition Home, 500 to Alabama State University t Palda Program, and 500 to And Justice for All. I'm okay. assuming those are 501c3s, even the ASU one? Or is it going to the foundation? It's... Do you, do we have paperwork on that? I don't believe I do. And he gave me a 501c3 for vision of Grace Transition Home, but I don't think I have the rest of the paperwork, the W-9 and E-Verify. We approved based on finding information. Subject to. Confirm information. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, District one, 1. Would you hold just a second? <clears throat> District 1. District 1 would like to do 500 to the uh, Fitzgerald Museum. I'm going to do 500 to That's My Child. That's all? Uh, okay. dis District 5 <coughs> would like to do uh, 1,000 to uh, Green Acres Neighborhood Association. Uh, and then 1,000 to uh, Gay Meadows, Glad Lane, Club View Estates Gay Neighborhood Meadows. Association. Okay, Meadows. It Glad could be a uh, GGCNA. Also. Glad Lane Neighborhood Association. Yes. Okay. And then um, 250 to Bad Boys Box. The, there's two of these that I don't think I have all the paperwork on, so they're approved. Then. Subject to Bad Bad Boys Boxing. Do we have anything on that? Bad Boys, we don't, and that's my child. I don't think we have all the paperwork that's needed okay. on them. Would be subject to. Okay. The proper documentation, 501c3. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, District 4. District 4 again. Bad Boys Boxing, 500. And That's My Child, 1,000. Both, both subject to. Mm. Okay. Anybody else? I got District 7, 1,000 to That's My Child, obviously subject to. Anybody else? Need a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Okay. In our public communication of non-agenda items, LX.